Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I'm going to try to take and help out all the smaller YouTubers out there. Uh, recently YouTube has done some policy changes and you know a lot of guys out there are freaking out about their AdSense and things that they're falling below this line. Uh, although it's not really going to cripple them as far as a financial standpoint is concerned. Uh, as AdSense does not actually pay that much money, it kind of cripples them a little bit more on the mental standpoint. Um, but this has recently uh, inspired people to kind of get off their hunches and really attack the uh, putting out videos and producing content and trying to get above their 1,000 subscriber level in the 4,000 hours of watch time, which is now the new standard in order for you to stay in the YouTube Partnership Program. So today I figured I'd take and help everybody out there that's interested in that sort of thing. If this isn't your kind of thing or you don't really care about those policy changes and stuff, just scroll on to another video. This is probably not your thing. It's not going to be a long one. I'm just going to take and show you the equipment that I use and what, talk a little bit about the price and what you can expect uh, as far as a cost to be able to film videos quickly and efficiently. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and uh, if you do, give it a like, remember to do that, and if you haven't subscribed and this is your kind of thing where you like these type of helpful videos, you may want to hit that subscribe button and the little jingly bell for notification. So with that being said, let's get into it. Okay, I've been asked multiple times on how I actually take and film my YouTube videos. Now, I believe YouTube should be a community, so I'd just like to take and share some helpful thoughts and how you guys can improve your own videos or the speed of making videos. This right here is what I have filmed nearly 500 videos for YouTube for. Now, not all those are public just yet, and not all of those will ever be released because there's a lot of failures uh, along the way. But I have shot a little over 500 videos of content on this cell phone alone. Now, I am not getting paid at all for making this video. This isn't a paid sponsorship or an advertisement for this phone company or this particular brand phone. But I will provide affiliate links down in the description. And if you don't know what an affiliate link is, so you have full disclosure, if you decide that you want to purchase this product and you purchase it through my link, I get a small little commission for that, uh, a small little sales percentage of the sale and you know that helps to go to take and support these type of videos. Now you may be asking yourself, okay Roy, since you film on a phone, what in the world are you filming on right now? Well I am filming on something that I just upgraded to here recently that me and Jess we had decided to take the financial decision to up our game on YouTube to help produce better teaching quality content by buying a new camera. The new camera that I bought is the Panasonic Lumex G7. And I'll put it spelled out somewhere right in here for you if you want to take and uh, go check that out. I'll put links for it down in the description as well so you can go check that out. Uh, this was a fairly expensive camera. I purchased it for about 600 bucks, the Lumex here, not this. So I purchased the Lumex for about 600 bucks. It normally retails at about 800, or so I was told by the camera shop. You can find varying prices to different degrees all around the internet, but that's what I was uh, that's what I purchased this camera for. Now, it can film in 4K at 30 frames a second which if you're a geek that knows a lot about cameras and stuff, it's a very it's a very good high quality camera for that price point. I've also got it mounted to a Manfrotto uh, ball head tripod. I will put, once again, all the links to what I'm talking about will be in the description. If you don't want to buy anything, you can at least go over there and reference the links just so you can read up on all their specs. But this is a kind of like a three deal, a three axis ball head tripod and I can adjust and do minute tuning on the fly pretty nice and easy you know adjusting left and right and whatnot turning it so on and so forth on just the go so it's a really nice ball head but I also mounted that to a camera boom I got a video on making a camera boom and that'll be out in later videos 
But let's get on to what I'm talking about today. So now you know full disclosure and what type of camera I'm shooting on currently. This is going to be my main camera going forward. I still film, however, vlogs and in the car things and all sorts of other type of content like a day in the life stuff, time lapse stuff. I still film all that on this phone. Now, the phone in, qu phone in question is called the LG V20. Now, it doesn't look like it is right now. This is a case that I bought that I took and put on it to protect it in the blacksmith shop. It's, it has kept the foam pretty much pristine in a light new condition. The great part about this cell phone is that you have complete access and control in manual mode on screen recording control where you can adjust everything and you, I don't know if you guys can see this or not let me see if I can zoom on in maybe you all can see all that Make sure it's good and focused. We'll see where we're at here. So you can completely control 100% all these settings here. You can control your focus. You can go autofocus or manual. You can control your ISO, your white balance, the saturation temperature, and you can even adjust your audio levels, which way the audio is adjusted from the front of the phone or the rear of the phone, your limits, everything like that. Uh, it even has a built-in wind screen, wind noise filter, which can take and really help you out. And obviously you can get all your basic notifications that still pop up. Uh, so, you know, so you can film on this very easily. You just hit film, you get all your lighting adjustments set, and away you go. So I can just sit here and I can crank down the ISO. Let me take it all the way down to where I can darken something completely out. Or I can take it all the way up as bright as I need, like in the like in nighttime shots, and completely blow out a picture, get it super bright, uh, you know, and everything in between, essentially. So it's a very handy camera as far as giving you functionality with a phone. And I'll zoom you back out here a little bit. So this is what I use. I have this sitting on a Manfrotto. Uh, ball head tripod. This is called the Pixie, I think it is. And it's a really great way of filming stuff when you're on the desk. You can move stuff very quickly with just one attachment and juncture. I'll jump over here in just a few minutes and show you the tripod that I've been filming on for the last 500 videos or so. And so, you know, you guys can see what type of tripod I've been using. But it's called a Manfrotto Compact Action Tripod. Once again, putting the links all in the description so you guys can take a look at these uh, more in depth and read the reviews and things like that about them. But this is what my basic setup is for filming. Now, I will go ahead and show you what I use for editing. This is one of the biggest things that is a problem for most of the Smiths that are trying to do stuff on YouTube is your editing time. So here that I'm opening up, once again, not a sponsor, but I really love the product. This here is called KineMaster, K-I-N-E-M-A-S-T-E-R. Now, if I zoom this up a little closer, hopefully you guys can read this. I can't tell on the screen right now as I'm recording. But you can see all these videos I have shot on this device. And they go down further than that, but I've just recently deleted a whole bunch, okay? But I can go clear up to the top here, okay? And I can show you how I very quickly edit these videos. I go in, and I can do a more in-depth explanation if this is something everybody's into and figure out kind of some screen recording, and maybe you guys would like that. But essentially, you go in, you go into your edits, and right there's all your footage. So this was my Get It Hot video that I filmed. You can add transitions, effects, and it's pretty much just a drag and drop feature. So I can come here clear to the end of the video. I can go to my media tab, access some sort of film footage that I have in it, whatever it may be, Okay, say like this, it's a picture. I can tap on the picture, and there it is. 
And now I can do stuff like I could tap on it and I can trim it, I can color correct it, I can extend it to the end of the video. I can add effects, I can add B-roll footage to this, I can add A-roll footage, I can add a ton of different things here. I can do different color filters. All this can be done in your smartphone. Very nice and easy. I can even delete something if I don't like it, which I've already got this video uploaded the way I like. But, and you can watch it in real time. So I'll play just a short clip here. So there you are. See, not too bad. That's, you know, you can watch as it goes here. You can stop it. You can add text to it, text boxes. There's a lot of things you can do. I can put up a little second window here. I can go split screen modes. You can make intros. All my intros have been made with Kind Master. Uh, you know, and so it is a very, very handy product. If you are doing this and trying to take in get to your goals, subscriber goals and whatnot. So that's Kind Master. Uh, you can search for that on the Google Play Store. I don't think I can provide links to it. It's just on the Google Play Store that you can go check that out. But this is my basic setup. Very simple, basic, basic, basic setup here. So that's, that's what I use for a phone, you know, for my camera setup. Now I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around here I'm going to go ahead and put this on what I actually use it on, the tripod itself. And I'll show you guys that. And I'll just go ahead and clip out, and I'll be right back. Okay, no, so this is, the, this is the Manfrotto compact action tripod that I've been filming all my videos with. Get a little out of focus there. I'll get back in focus here for a moment. Uh, this thing has really helped boost the speed and the availability for me to be able to take and make videos very quickly and on the fly. And that's kind of the trick here. We want to take and make videos very quickly so this way our shots, individual shots, don't take so long to make. Now I, I abide by the simple method of keep it simple smithy or keep it simple stupid or keep it simple sweetie. Whatever connotation of that that you want to use, you need to keep it as simple as possible. YouTube's algorithms favor watch time more than anything else, but the second thing they favor is upload frequency. So if you can upload once a week, twice a week, three times a week, every day of a week, twice a day a week, any of those things that you can keep at a consistent pace, the algorithm likes. What it doesn't like is it doesn't like infrequent posting. Whenever you just take and post a video, all of a sudden your channel sees lots of views real quick, 50 or 100 or thousands or hundreds of thousands of views, real quick it just pegs the meter and then what happens afterwards, it drops completely and you don't post nothing for a month or a week or two weeks or three weeks before your next big post, right? And when you do that, it freaks out the algorithm. The algorithm goes and sees that, oh, they've got production. Maybe I should take and promote this video and get it in front of a bunch of viewers so this way they can watch. This is what helps build your YouTube community and subscribers. If people don't know that you're out there, people don't know they can watch your content, if YouTube's not promoting you, you're not gonna get the subscribers, you're not gonna get the views, and you're not gonna get the watch time. So. You have to take and post consistently. Just picture it as like a heart rate meter. You know? Last thing you want to do is be flatlined and then, oh, I got a breath of light, and then flatlined, and then, oh, a breath of light, and flatlined. I mean, a doctor is going to promote, pronounce you dead. So will the YouTube algorithm. So that's kind of a simple layman's term. So you need to keep your heartbeat flowing. Whether it's every other day, or every couple days, or every three days, once a week, whatever get consistent with your posting schedule. That's key. That way it can figure you out and it can decide the Google's learning system, um, you know, YouTube's AI and all that can actually decide where you rank and where it needs to post your videos. Uh, the more information you give it, via memes, more videos you can give it, the smarter it learns, the quicker it learns, the faster it takes and promotes your videos.
Now, those are all very simple, watered down. It's much deeper than that. I'm not going to bore the blacksmithing community with that. So, with this compact action tripod, you have to buy one of these little button deals. There's this little button thing that you have to screw on the bottom of one of these, a spring clip for your phone. Okay? It gets screwed onto the bottom of this little spring clip. Okay? Let me grab this phone here. You take your phone, your LG V20, or whatever phone you may have in your pocket. LG V20 is an Android device. KineMaster is an Android program. Now I've heard Phil, Filmora Go is a good one for iOS, but KineMaster is for Android. I don't know if it works with iOS or not, but I do know that it's an Android product. So, that being stated, there's a free version that you guys can go check out. They're going to put a Kind Master stamp on all your videos, so like a watermark stamp, until you pay to have that come off, like I have, and that's about $45 a year subscription, so you know what you're getting into there. But, nice and simple, it goes right in here, and I press this lever, boom. I'm all set up. This has a thumb control that you loosen, and now you can swivel anywhere you want and get the shot that you want and need. So I can be aiming down like that, I can aim right at you and film, I can go over to the forge and film, all that quick. So you're not spending a lot of time moving your tripod to a bunch of different locations and things like that, and it makes your videos a little more interesting. So you know, everything's fairly simple with this. One turn knob, you can lower the height of the boom, you can crank the height up, it has simple legs with just little fly things here that you pull open and you can shorten it or lengthen the legs very quick and very easy. Now I will get into why I have chose to go to a actual camera boom that I fabricated myself. I'm going to have videos and plans on that available here soon on the website as soon as my uh, as soon as my guy for plans get those gets that done and knocked out for me. And you'll be able to take and find it over at blacksmithpdfs.com. And that's how I support this channel. But I'll show you my new setup. Uh, you know, and I won't do it this video. This video has gone long enough. I'll do it in another video if there's enough interest to see my new camera boom setup. But you'll see that in other, uh, other videos. The new setup, the reason why I chose to go to that is because I can very easily boom down and I can get a lot of really interesting and dynamic camera angles. And that's really what I'm after. Uh, to try to take and increase the learning to be able to give you guys a real close shot and an in-depth view of what it is I'm exactly doing at the anvil so you understand how the metal's moving better. Obviously with a tripod you got to find some place for the legs to go. Uh, this is a pretty open design as you can see there's no crossbars in here so that means I can get it up pretty close to stuff and uh, you know get it over things but it still didn't do as good as a camera boom so I built a boom also to take and hold a much heavier camera so that's it for this video I hope that helps somebody out there if you guys want more information on how I film uh, how I edit if you want me to do like a screen recording of how I use kind master to edit down videos and things like that on the fly to do them quickly uh, I will, do, I will certainly be glad to do a video out there to try to help all the smaller creators out there. I know you guys are kind of really taking the bl blunt end of the stick, so to speak. Um, and, you know, it's really my heart to take and try to help guys succeed at what you want to take and succeed at. So, if you like this video, give it that thumbs up. Let me know in the comment section your vote of whether you'd like to see more of these videos or, or not. Uh, once again, as I stated at the beginning of this video, this is not for everyone. This is only for the guys who want to take uh, filming themselves kind of seriously and do that on YouTube. So I might do a little series on this. It'll be a short series just to help you guys out. But anyways, that's it for today. Thank you for watching this video. And like I always say, God bless you, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.